Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends. In the chapter of partial differential equation, we have seen various types. In the last video, we saw how to solve homogeneous linear partial differential equation. In this video, we will see how to solve non-homogeneous linear partial differential equations. After seeing partial differential equation which were homogeneous, let us see what are non-homogeneous linear partial differential equations. The format would be the same, the way to write them will be similar. So non-homogeneous linear partial differential equation can be represented as this is in the same form as we had this is in the same form as we had homogeneous linear partial differential equation. Now, in this part, the only difference being this is non-homogeneous, which means we can have various powers of partial derivative of z. We can have one as the first order derivative of z, the second as second order, and we can also have the third order derivative of z. That means we will have del z, maybe del square z, as well as del cube z in the same partial differential equation. Hence, it is non-homogeneous. Now, how to solve these types of linear partial differential equations? So, to solve this, first, we will factorize the function of d d dash. We will be factorizing this in factors such as So, we will be factorizing in two factors or more factors in the form of d minus m1 d dash minus alpha 1 and d minus m2 d dash minus alpha 2 and so on. So, after factorizing the function of d d dash into these two factors, we will be getting the complementary function and we will be also finding the particular integral. So, again here also the solution will comprise of two parts complementary function cf and the particular integral that is pi. So, for finding complementary function this is how we first factorize and hence we get the complementary function as the format of writing the complementary function will be e raised to alpha 1 x into f1 of y plus m1x plus e raised to alpha 2x into f2 of y plus m2x. So, e raised to alpha 1x into f1 of y plus m1x plus e raised to alpha 2x into f2 of y plus m2x. This will be the complementary function. And for particular integral, The method is same as that we applied for homogeneous linear partial differential equation. Right? So, thus we will be getting our final solution. Let us take an example to understand this method. The first example that we have for non-homogeneous linear partial differential equation is we have two factors as the function of d d dash that is d minus d dash minus 1 into d minus d dash minus 2 of z that is these factors applied to z these operators of d d dash applied to z is equal to a function of x comma y which is in two parts e raised to 3x minus y plus x. Let us compare this with the standard form which we had derived. On comparing the left hand side with the questions left hand side, we get the values of m1, alpha1, m2 and alpha2 as
Thus, we can find the complementary function. The standard format of complementary function is plus let us substitute the values of m1, m2, alpha1 and alpha2. So, we have got the complementary function which is the first part of the entire solution. Let us go ahead and find out the particular integral. As I have discussed, the particular integral will be found out in the same way as we did for homogeneous linear partial differential equation. Let us see how to find the PI. Therefore, the PI will be Now, 1 upon f d d dash, this is the function of d and d dash, is applied to both the parts of the function of x, y, that is e raised to 3x minus y and the other part is x. So, we will multiply this to both these terms. Let us see what we get. Multiplying it the first term, plus. multiplying it to the second term. Now, there are different rules for both the terms. For e raised to 3x minus y, that is e raised to ax plus by format, we will be directly substituting d as a and d dash as b. Here, d will be equal to 3 and d dash will be equal to minus 1. Let us first substitute and check if the denominator is a non-zero term. So, if we put 3 in place of d and minus 1 in place of d dash d minus of minus 1 that is or 3 minus of minus 1 that is plus 1 3 plus 1 4 minus 1 is 3 and 3 minus of minus 1 again 4 minus 2 is 2. So, the denominator is a non-zero term we can directly substitute 3 and minus 1 in place of d and d dash that is for the first part. For the second part which is of the form x raised to m y raised to n. I can write this x as x raised to 1, y raised to 0. Now, it is of the form x raised to m, y raised to n. So, what is the formula? We take the reciprocals of the function of d d dash and expand it using binomial theorem. Right? Let us apply the rules for both. we have substituted the values of d and d dash as 3 and minus 1 for the first part. For the second part, we take the reciprocals. Let us expand these two terms using binomial expansion. First, while using binomial expansion, and expanding these terms, we write the ascending powers of d dash upon d. Correct? Even if we do not write d dash upon d, we have to separate out and convert it into 1 plus something for using binomial expansion. Correct? So, let us take out minus 1 common from the first part and minus 2 common from the second part. Simplifying the first part of the particular integral and taking minus 1 and minus 2 common in the second part, we get. So, the first part is simplified. On the second part, we have taken minus 1 common. So, we will be getting this and taking minus 2 common, we will be getting this. Both are raised to minus 1, right? So, for expanding this, we use binomial expansion and this we take common outside. We get let us expand both of them using binomial expansion. Expansion of first part into expansion of second part.
into x. We have arrived at this expression. Now, let us again understand what is d and d dash. We know that d dash is partial derivative with respect to y. However, in our question, y is equal to, the power of y is equal to 0. We do not have y. So, d dash will be 0 for all its powers. That is, d dash, d dash square, etc. All will be equal to 0. So, in our expression, d dash, square of d dash and all powers of d dash will become 0. Now, x has the power 1. In our function, x has the power 1. So, only the first power of d, that is d, will remain. All other higher powers of d, the operator d, will become 0. So, d square, d cube, everything will become 0. So, d will remain and these higher powers will be 0. Okay? Therefore, pi will be equal to first part remains as it is. And in the second part, we will have d dash as 0, d will remain, everything else becomes 0 d dash by 2 is 0, d by 2 remains, everything else becomes 0. So, finally we get our first bracket into second bracket into x. Let us simplify these two steps again. So, we have finally arrived at this step. We have 1 by 2 into 1 minus d into 1 minus d by 2 of x. These are operators, differential operators. 1 by 1, we apply these differential operators to x. Let us first apply 1 minus d by 2 to x. When we apply 1 minus d by 2 to x, we will be getting x minus dx by 2. We multiplied x with 1 minus d by 2. 1 into x is x, d by 2 into x is dx by 2. We apply d to x, that is partial derivative of x with respect to x. The answer is 1. So, this bracket becomes x minus 1 by 2. Multiplying these two brackets, we get I multiplied 1 to the second bracket, I got x minus 1 by 2. Multiplying minus d to both the terms, correct? Now, the last term that is derivative of 1 by 2, that is derivative of constant is always 0. This term, derivative of x partially with respect to x will be equal to 1. So, this part will become 1. This is what remains. This part will be minus 3 by 2 and multiplying half to both the terms. This is our final particular integral. Second part of our final solution. Let us write both the parts together. Therefore, we get the final solution as Z is equal to CF plus PI. What was our CF? This were the two terms of our complementary function plus the particular integral which we have just found out. This is our final solution for the given non-homogeneous linear partial differential equation with constant coefficient. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.